Welcome everyone to module 12, uh, Garwal Traverse in our uh, Himalayan webinar series. In this module, we're again uh, gonna focus on one of the beautiful regions in the Western Indian Himalayas, uh, next to Kumon yesterday. We'll be uh, focusing in the next uh, 10 modules on different uh, beautiful ranges uh, of the Western Himalayas and uh, taking you on a visual journey through some passes and unique experiences in each and every of these regions. As usual, we are live on Zoom every morning at eight o'clock on the given URL, and the Zoom recordings are posted later in the day on both Insta TV, the first 10 minutes, and the full videos on YouTube and ultrajourneys.org. Okay, let's get started with Garwal. So here you can see a small village in uh, Western Garwal, uh, close to uh, Kedar Kamta, uh, Chaptari, uh, beautiful uh, kind of, uh, beautifully built with natural materials, uh, rocks, wood, a lot of wood at the base of the Himalayas, uh, limestone roofs, very friendly people, very innocent, very uh, overwhelming hospitality as you travel through these uh, small settlements and uh, foothills of the Uttarakhand Himalayas. Another uh, close look at uh, Uttarakhand here. So we'll be focusing on the western part. So we'll be going through uh, Joshima, through Badrinath, uh, Kedanath, Gangotri, Yamunotri, and Uttarakashi. And these are the high ranges we'll be traversing uh, through the mid range passes. As I mentioned yesterday, so we traversed from the uh, north. Sorry, the east south here to the northwest, so over 30 passes in total across Uttarakhand. Uh, today, we'll be focusing on Garwal, which are these uh, five districts of Uttarakashi, Rudra Prayag, Shamoli, Teri, and Pori. Uh, Garwal is traversed in 15 uh, passes uh, below the uh, Gangotri National Park on the right and the uh, Govind Pashu National Park on the left side. Okay, let's maybe zoom in first on Google Earth again. Uh, so here again, we look at India and the uh, Himalayas. So again, if you look at the Himalayas, they are spread out uh, all the way from uh, Tajikistan to the Karakom in pa Pakistan to Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, Himachal, and then here Uttarakhand before we enter uh, Nepal on the right side. So Uttarakhand is again divided into the passes here on the um, east, which we explained yesterday, the Kumaon region, five eastern districts, and then the passes on the left side here, which is the Garwal district. Okay, so let's take a look where we left off uh, yesterday. We had reached uh, till a few passes before Jushimat. So let's zoom in a little bit uh, on those passes. Um, we reached exactly at uh, this pass here, Cooking Gull, Cooking Gull from where, uh, again, we'll go through many beautiful uh, small settlements at the base, the foothills of the uh, uh, Nanda Devi uh, biosphere. You have Rishul Peak here, a huge uh, 7,000 meter peak. So again, Jenny, Pana, all remember Sartoli, amazing place where I stay with the shepherds, as you'll see in the coming slides. And then the amazing uh, Huari Pass here, uh, from where eventually we enter a more touristic place, uh, Joshina, Joshimat, which is on the way to Badrinath. So here you'll go from peaceful, serene meadows into um, heavy and noisy traffic. From there, we jump across the highway quickly to get out of all this pilgrim noise and again go to so many beautiful villages on the upper uh, valleys above Joshimat to cross the uh, Naula Pass. Naula Pass is located near Badrinath. Badrinath is kind of a Yatra place where you'll also find many people uh, hiking to these uh, foothills of the Himalayas. Uh, this will be the Kangu Tree high, high Ranges. So from the Nuala Pass, you get stunning views on these uh, 180 degrees views on the Kangu Tree Ranges. From there, we get down, and then actually, we need transportation. As we pass this region here, which will uh, go towards um, this will go towards Kedar, not actually. So again, uh, heavy uh, kilometer-long traffic jams of pilgrims. Uh, so then we basically go to Somprayag from where, which is located on this uh, 
noisy pilgrim traffic from there again we can escape to a small village Triyungi from where we head towards uh, Kyung Kim a beautiful pass that will allow us again to descend in uh, almost like an uninhabited uh, valley from where we then uh, go to Ri etc. Uh, Rim Genwali Pass, we go to a village Genwali, from there actually we enter into the forest, uh, lost the trail here, getting over again onto some unknown passes towards uh, Pinswar. And Pinswar, uh, we have uh, a pretty kind of famous touristic spot here again, the uh, Dodi Dal Lake, which uh, also gives access to the Darwa Pass then later on, I think I'm still a little bit early. Oh, so then we get back uh, to the plains here. This will be the Gango Tree uh, Valley, from where we go to Gango Tree. Here we can go via Riatal. We can get in uh, beautiful meadows known as Dairam, also a bit touristic there uh, for campsites. Uh, not many people then uh, cross the pass beyond Dairam and then get in a kind of uninhabited uh, jungle valley where I came face to face with a black bear after crossing. Uh, stream uh, using a fallen tree log to the village of Manjini. From Manjini we get uh, to the Darwa Pass uh, where again we got completely stuck in this uh, valley here, an inhabited valley that flows to Hanuman uh, Chati uh, on the junction to the Yamuna tree site. <clears throat> so there uh, uh, we had to come back actually and uh, get down to all these small villages and make a roundabout uh, Okay, after then uh, taking another transport from Utrakashi, we uh, hip hop over the Yamuna tree valley. And then again, we have come to uh, the place that was closest to my heart. Here I've experienced some of the best hospitality near villages of Pari, Koti, uh, Sudnol is there, and many villages here at the other side of Kedarkanta. So Kedarkanta mostly is accessed from the Sankri site here. Uh, which is pretty touristic. Uh, this is the Govil National Park. Uh, on the other side, actually, nobody comes, and uh, here you, you enter into beautiful small farming settlements where every single house in every single village will uh, invite you over for tea. Amazing people. So after crossing Kedarkanda then to the well-known Sankri site here and Hartidun in the Govil National Park. Uh, you go down to Natwat, which is the forest uh, entry checkpoint, and from there again you get into the Rupin Valley. In the Rupin Valley, same story, beautiful uh, settlements, very ancient temples here in this um, uh, specific uh, valley. Uh, proceeding further along a pretty well-known uh, trekking trail to the Rupin Pass, obviously, where you finally leave Uttarakhand and enter uh, Himachal to the village of Dodra and then basically uh, cross over to the uh, Chansal Pass in Shimla district. Voila, so this is a little bit uh, the Garwal, uh, a whole traverse here of 15 passes below the uh, Gango tree and below the Govin Pasha National Park, which uh, spreads out here. This is the Baspa range. We'll be uh, focusing on this range later where you have several passes crossing between uh, the Shimla district and the Baspa Valley here. Uh, here you have Sangla. Sangla is a beautiful valley and uh, also uh, Chitkul uh, called the last village of India before you enter towards Tibet. At least five high passes here including Rupin, uh, Puran and uh, several other passes. Uh, okay, let's now focus on uh, Garwal. So here again the same uh, 15 passes which I showcased on the Google Earth map. Red are the passes, and you can see blue are uh, abundant. Many villages at the foothills where it's easy uh, to resupply food and uh, night stay also. Uh, so you can see the famous spots here of uh, typically inside the valleys, Badri Nat, Yoshi Mat, you have Keda Nat here, very famous. Gango tree, which uh, goes fully uh, in this valley behind the Gango tree high ranges. And then you have the Yamuna tree. So whenever you cross these uh, <coughs> pilgrims uh, routes, you'll get, uh, uh, it will hit you in the face, the stark contrast between the unknown, non-touristic uh, places and those uh, crowded uh, pilgrim uh, highways. Here are the uh, 15 passes over which we went. Kukinkal, Suryagat, Kuari, Noali, 
uh, you can call and then whenever I give the from the to village uh, these are actually unknown passes unnamed passes so I just give the uh, the two major towns on both sides of the pass as you can see we stay uh, below uh, four thousand uh, meter here which is perfectly suitable to traverse in the month of May or even April if there is not too much snowfall uh, even though the, the paths are at lower altitude, the uh, climb and the descent is also quite significant as the from and the two towns are located uh, at pretty low altitudes in the surrounding values. Most of the passes are quite easy and moderate, so perfect for uh, people who get started in alpine style exploration on these non-touristic routes. Let's start with the first three uh, that leads eventually to uh, Jushimat here, Jushimat and uh, Badrinat. So here we uh, left uh, yesterday at Wan village, very beautiful village at the end of the valley from where we climbed up through uh, some shepherd med meadows over the Kukin Gal, and then basically get down to the village of Sital, extremely beautiful again from where we climb up into the meadows to the Suryagat. Jenny, another uh, extremely remote place uh, connected through some roads initially built, they built roads here which have all been kind of landslided. Uh, amazing night stay in Sartori with the shepherds before I get over the Kuari Pass and get uh, where it hits me in the face again as we enter in a super crowded uh, touristic Jushimat or pilgrimistic, should I say. Here you can see those beautiful settlements. I just pick out one sitel. So the valleys are like at the foot plains of Uttarakhand or amazingly forested, beautiful valleys, big streams in between. Sometimes the valley is open, sometimes the valley, uh, the river cuts deeply into the valley and you get like almost a gorge. Where the valley is open and the slopes are gradual, you'll get these uh, small settlements and uh, terrace forming here at the end of May, golden brown as uh, the harvest is in full swing. So here you can clearly see it's impossible to uh, harvest here or plant with tractors. Everything is hand, uh, manual labor basically. Here in Sartoli, uh, kind of meadows or uh, like an old ruined uh, settlement now. Uh, you can see it in the background. There are some houses here and some compound wall. Uh, not inhabited anymore. Uh, in many cases, those uh, settlements near the passes have all been ad abandoned here. Um, at the end of the day, basically on the way to the base of the Kuari Pass, I was planning to settle down in the wild, while suddenly I had the pleasure to see these gentlemen here. Uh, you have no idea, thousands sheep and uh, goat in one place, overwhelming sight. Uh, and these people again immediately invited me for a cup of hot milk, uh, followed by a sumptuous dinner of rotis. And uh, they even let me sleep in their tent while they were sleeping in the open. Oh, really amazing uh, innocence and hospitality. Let's take a look at the first video walking through this uh, herds of sheep. We are at uh, Sartuni, at uh, the base of the uh, Kuari Pass, surrounded by thousand sheep <laughs> of uh, seven, thirty-five sheep herders, protected by seven sheep dogs. It's all sheep and goat here, <laughs> as far as the eye can see. Amazing experience. So you can see like the whole meadow is actually filled up with animals. Uh, thousand is a huge number. Uh, so then in the night, uh, in the same place, actually without any kind of uh, tents or covered camp, these people just sit in the open. It's pretty cold there at the base of the Kuari Pass. It's an open meadow, so a cold wind is blowing. Uh, they get in their evening routine where they start preparing rotis, make them yummy over the campfire. And uh, this was a wonderful night stay, actually. I'll show some videos on shepherd campsites in uh, the upcoming uh, valleys. Okay, then finally we cross the Kuwari Pass, which is a pretty steep climb uh, to cross over to Joshimat. Uh, the pass again is 3,800 meter, I believe, so still covered with snow even towards the uh, second part of May due to unprecedented snowfall. So let me take you on a small traverse here in the snow. Walking uh, through a couple of snow fields here. 
uh, while crossing the ridge next to the Churasi Pass. As usual, the Going western off, side is always a little bit uh, more snowy than the east. Looks like I'm not the first one to break the trail this time. Okay, so then we basically enter Joshimat and then it's a long traverse uh, towards the Rudranat site from where we cross the Naula Pass. So again, as I mentioned, this whole highway towards Joshimat and Badrinat is one uh, pilgrim uh, kind of bee nest. You want to get off the highway as soon as possible and basically climb up here into uh, the slope above the valley where you come across amazing uh, small central settlements like Urgam and Dumak, uh, really taken out of a fairy tale book, I would say, uh, where you go to a beautiful lake, Tolita Lake, on the way to the Naula Pass. Near the Naula Pass, you'll find some more people as it's again a kind of Yatra pilgrim route. Until Dumak, you won't find anyone. So here you can see, for example, Urgam, uh, that same beautiful views below the high ranges, in this case, of the Gango Tree National Park. You see these beautiful meadows carved out in the uh, forest of the foothills of the Uttarakhand Himalayas. Then again, all these villages are, as I mentioned uh, yesterday, also connected through beautiful cobbled paths. That's the nice thing about Uttarakhand, they're always paka paths connecting these small hamlets, obviously, as they have to transport goods and people have to move between these paths, between these villages, which are not connected by roads. Uh, here we're meeting, like, again, some fine chiefs uh, crossing us on these cobbled uh, pathways between the hamlets. And then coming in Dumak, Dumak was kind of the last village uh, before we get again into the forest uh, towards uh, Rudranat. Uh, so whenever you come in these villages, the kids uh, are so energetic, so innocent, and they just... Uh, run to any visitor there because actually very, very few outsiders come to these uh, places in which are non-touristic. Nobody comes across these uh, passes, even though there are clear trails connecting these villages. Here then, uh, after climbing up uh, towards the Rudranat site, we come across these beautiful lakes where the high ranges again of the Gango tree are reflected here in Tolidal open meadows. A uh, bit kind of semi-touristic here. So here we had a small... Uh, uh, kind of ruin uh, where one local guy was having a hotel and providing some food to the uh, hikers. And then here you can see as you go to the uh, Naola Pass, you get stunning views on the Kango Tree high ranges uh, in a clear sky. This is like very overwhelming. These ranges are far away, but due to the altitude of the Naola Pass, you get uh, overwhelming views on these high ranges. Proceeding then to the next uh, four passes. Um, um, after this, actually, we took a uh, bus ride to Son Prayak to basically escape all the highways leading to Kedanat. From Son Prayak, we can again escape into the lesser known areas and again find peace here, so crossing these four passes. Three of them are, don't carry a name, so I just named them as per the from and to uh, villages on both sides of the pass. Same story again. Uh, here you can see Gutu on the uh, roots, beautiful uh, settlements on uh, the lower slopes, on the less steep slopes of the valley. Very beautiful, especially when it's harvest. You get these golden brown uh, fields where um, the villagers will be in uh, full harvest mode. As you climb up then from the valleys to um, the passes, you come across these. Uh, here is the Ringen Valley Pass. You get these high ranges, these ridges, which are beautiful meadows and full of these trails used by shepherds to uh, graze uh, the entire slopes uh, around these ranges. Coming down again to Gainwali here, uh, same settlements uh, nested along the slopes of the valley, surrounded by steppe plantation and around the plantations, it's full of dense forest with beautiful trails uh, connecting these hamlets. 
from Gainwali, we get a little bit stuck in the wilderness there, so there the trail uh, finally fades out. I guess it's not used and I completely lose track. I uh, finally have to cross some uninhabited valley through a stream, then climb up uh, CTC style along the slopes uh, into forest. Uh, not very hopeful again on finding anyone uh, at the end of the day here, but as luck would have it, I come into some unknown undocumented settlement, Rayana, which is mostly deserted. But uh, again, the, some shepherds are camping over there. So I end up in uh, good company for the night as the shepherds again prefer to uh, prepare some yummy uh, wood fried rotis with alu here. Um, I'll show a small video of the ambience on this campsite. आज आज अपने साप्ताहिक कार्यक्रम चर्चा का विषय है कि अंतर्गत राजनीति में बढ़ती हिंसात्मक घटनाएं लोकतंत्र के लिए एक गंभीर चुनौती पर परिचर्चा प्रसारित करेगा इसे रात साढ़े नौ बजे से आकाशवाणी के एफएम गोल्ड चैनल इंद्रप्रस्थ और अतिरिक्त मीटरों पर सुना जा सकेगा वित्त मंत्री अरुण जेटली ने प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी को पत्र लिखकर ये अनुरोध किया है कि स्वास्थ्य कारणों से उन्हें नई सरकार में शामिल न किया जाए उन्होंने कहा कि पिछली एनडीए सरकार और पार्टी संगठन में उन्हें महत्वपूर्ण Voila. So then proceeding further again, after this, uh, the trails are not very clear, but yeah, you can kind of find the way by knowing the direction of the passes and just going like through the wild. Uh, it's not too dense forest. Then again, you come across very remote settlements. It's not even villages, it's just like shelters, uh, where again, most people are actually left. Only a few families still stay there. Uh, so here I was able to uh, cook uh, some of my Maggie's in one of those uh, semi-open shelters, uh, animals less people shelters. Again, as you go up towards the passes, you get this beautiful, uh, this is on the way to Mala, beautiful uh, meadows uh, full of alpine flowers, uh, giving those uh, beautiful views on the forest below and the high ranges in the horizon. Mm, here again on the way to Mala, beautiful pathways uh, from the passes towards the valleys. Finally, uh, when we reach Mala, Mala is on the way again to Gangotri. So a little bit of a kind of touristic route. I mean, touristic or pil pilgrimistic, I would say. Uh, going from Mala, you can walk towards Riatal, and from there again, you can escape from these pilgrim uh, noise and busyness through the Dayara meadows. Uh, crossing over to again like an, uh, a wild valley here. Here you come in the middle of nowhere, forest. Uh, here I met actually a uh, black bear and we had to cross a wild stream using a, a wooden lock, otherwise it was impossible to cross the stream flowing down from the Kovin Pashu National Park, uh, ending up in the village of Manjini for night stay, where we join a kind of uh, a kind of touristic route from Sangham Chati towards the Dodita Lake. Uh, many pilgrims are there, a little bit commercial. Crossing over to the Darwa Pass, getting into the Hanuman Chati Valley here, uh, which eventually becomes very beautiful, but eventually becomes a narrow gorge. Getting totally stuck there. Uh, difficult to traverse, a lot of landslides on the side of the stream. Uh, so the actual route actually goes above the uh, ridge here, which we didn't know, undocumented trail, and uh, still a lot of snow, which uh, prevented us from seeing the route. Here on the high meadows of Daira, we met uh, these um, uh, nomadic tribes. These are Gujars, which normally stay at the villages of the foothill of the Uttarakhand Himalayas and in the summer go to the alpine meadows where they graze their cattle. They stay with their family. They don't have any fancy shelters. They just sit under a tarpaulin sheet and again show you, shower you with overwhelming hospitality. Uh, before you know, you'll be drinking fresh undiluted hot buffalo milk and they will be feeding you with some uh, food. Again, you can see some Gujars here, typical look, uh, rough forested look of these guys uh, staying uh, in those uh, places in the uh, summer months. From then, Dayara, we get down, as I mentioned, in um, 
a very kind of uh, unused trail, which eventually we lose the rain and we get down to uh, virgin forest to the stream. In the stream, uh, we basically get stuck until we find a lock to uh, cross this wild water stream. We finally hit the stream to Manji village, quite a descent from uh, the sea forest above. So next challenge is to cross this uh, twice across the stream. Lucky, uh, one tree was fallen down here. So hopefully we can cross using the tree. Please come. So then finally at the end of the day <clears throat> we have we meet that black bear just on the other side of the stream who didn't hear us coming because of the noise of the water and then basically we end up in the village of Manji uh, where so we hold for the night in a small uh, uh, shelter here wooden shelter of a person who is still willing to make us some dinner at the end of the day then we hike along a fairly well laid out touristic path to a uh, beautiful Dodital one of those high lakes just below the Darwa Pass you see up there. Beautiful serene lake, crystal clear waters with uh, a beautiful wooden kind of, uh, looks like a little Buddhistic uh, temple. Climbing up the Darwa Pass then, fairly steep again. On the other side, it's typically on the western side, uh, it will be, still be snow covered, while on the eastern side where the sun shines bright in the morning, it will be mostly melted and clear. The actual tri uh, trail here to Hanuman Chati, towards the Yamuna Tree Valley, goes on top of the uh, pass, it seems, but we went down following like an OSM route, which got us stuck here in the valley. Still an amazing experience, very serene, unknown wild wilderness valley, uh, initially flat and quite manageable to walk along, but eventually uh, gaining force, the Hanuman Chati stream starts cutting deep into the valley and uh, it's simply uh, you get stuck on vertical sides on both sides so we climb up back and uh, then we basically again take a transport to Rajgargi from where we do the final section towards um, one of the most hospitable areas here on the eastern side of Kedarkanta before we enter the more uh, touristic hiking valley of Sankri and Harkidun below the Govind National Park uh, and then proceed basically towards the border of Himachal in the Rupin Valley here. Rupin, which uh, flows down from the Baspa Range. Uh, Rupin Pass, one of the passes between uh, the Baspa Valley here, Sangla, and uh, Uttarakhand or uh, Shimla district in Himachal. Okay, so here we see again, as on the first slides, these beautiful hamlets through which you go. People look a little weird at you, as normally nobody goes through these villages. These are at the end of the valley. Many people don't know the passes, so they actually don't go to these villages at the end of the valley uh, on the way to those unknown passes. Um, I've slept in one of these homes. Amazing, a lot of beautiful woodwork, very uh, warm in the winter, chill in the summer. Uh, animals and grains are kept in the ground floor and then the people usually stay on the upper floors as during the winter I guess there's a significant amount of snowfall which uh, would cover the uh, ground floor of these houses. Uh, same villages on this eastern side of Kedar Kanta, that lost valley actually dead end. Uh, you come across amazing ancient temples, beautifully hand carved. Every village has one of these beautiful Temples here you see the one in Surnal village, the Rinukon Mata temple, decorated be beautifully with bells and horns of wild animals, and sometimes uh, trophies of the village uh, in sports tournaments. Then in the last village there in Darshan, at the base of the Kedar Kanta, I completely lose the trail. Uh, the trail is pretty clear for straightforward to the village of Darshan, but after that there are so many trails going left and right that I completely get stuck. 
uh, without speaking the local language, also no clue uh, where to uh, go, where, what to ask. Uh, eventually one lady, an older lady takes pity on me, shows me the right way and before sending me on the right uh, track, uh, gives me some freshly prepared uh, lunch here with some fresh uh, buffalo milk, enough energy to make it in one push across the Kedar Kantar peak. Here then finally we cross over from this uh, last isolated valley with all these small villages into the um, valley of Sankri and Harkidun with uh, beautiful views at the uh, uh, Govin National Park here. Uh, pretty touristic place with a couple of passes in that lead uh, towards the other side. Here you can see two shepherds sitting at uh, one of the sites of Kedar Kanta. Again, as we then enter that last section towards uh, the border with Himachal, you, know, you come again onto many beautiful villages, uh, beautiful ancient architecture, very traditional architecture of the houses, and every village will have these beautiful ancient handcrafted temples here in uh, Doni village, uh, high above the Rupin River. Uh, beautiful work. These are the kind of villages you uh, find here. This is at the entry of the Rupin River Valley, where the Rupin actually comes out of a gorge and get joined, uh, joined to one of the side streams. All the houses are built traditionally, not a single modern house here with concrete and cement uh, spoiling the uh, looks of the village, uh, except for maybe metal sheets on some houses. Otherwise, they are covered with those big uh, tiles uh, taken from a limestone from the side of the mountain. Here again, the last village then, uh, or the first village while entering uh, Himachal is Dodra, uh, located some 600 meters above the Rupin Valley on the right side. It's a steep climb, uh, but again, like very beautiful. I can call this nothing else but fairy tale. Every single house here in Dodra is made from a combination of natural stone and beautifully hand carved uh, natural woods covered by these uh, special kind of a bit Japanese uh, designed uh, limestone style, stone tile roofs. Again, the granaries at the ground floor and the uh, living quarters at the upper floor so that people are above the snow during the winter. Finally, we cross over into uh, main Shimla district of Imashal through the Chansal Pass. Once again, getting beautiful views from the top of the Chansal Pass on dense forest rhododendrons on the open slopes and at the horizon you can see it the Baspa ranges of the Govind National Park. Voila that's it. Uh, you want to know more about each and every pass, each and every section, check out my blog ultrajourney.org which will have lots more photos, description to step into my footsteps. Um, tomorrow we'll be talking about the next region, one of my favorites being the great Himalayan National Park like a protected wildlife uh, biosphere, uh, restricted entry, uh, very lesser use passes deep inside, but some of the most, the most raw and virgin, beautiful nature I've seen uh, in any part of the lower Himalayas. Thanks for joining uh, my regular